Great. So, welcome to you all to the to this webinar. Um, we're really pleased that you're here, and uh, today uh, we're going to share with you some information about uh, the Five Novel Centers, uh, a new coaching model that the uh, that the Eric and I and Chris have created, and uh, we are really looking forward to uh, to share that with you. And we will give you some information about uh, our certification programs. We've got a couple of certification programs. One of the, one of them on board of a ship, and that's really cool. We're gonna share uh, a video uh, about the trip that we did in April, and uh, we're gonna tell you something more about um, a program that we're gonna do in New York in November. But anyway, really glad that you're here. Um, um, let me first start with introducing who we are, so that you've got an idea uh, who's, on, who's on the call. So uh, let me start with Eric Kroner. Um, yeah, well, Eric Kroner is, is an amazing person. I met him uh, about 15 years ago uh, when I started uh, my coaching career uh, with CTI, the Coaches Training Institute. He came to the Netherlands and uh, he trained me as a coach and he was my coach in the certification program. I think the, the great thing about Eric is that um, he, he is really a master coach. Um, I, I don't think there are much more people who are more uh, equipped than he is. And it's, uh, it's an honor to be working with him. And uh, today you will experience, uh, yeah, what Eric Cohen is like. <laughs> so anyway, so that, that's it. Oh, Eric, maybe you can tell something about uh, Krista, or maybe you can add something what I left out. Uh, no, you did, you did a great job, uh, Pim. I, I have nothing to add. I'll, I'll just jump right into mm. Krista. Uh, uh, and I think it's very apropos because uh, we, we all got connected uh, because of Pim, actually. Uh, um, uh, so I'll tell you just a little bit more about, uh, uh, and, and Krista will tell you more about Pim, but I just want to say that Krista, uh, Pim, Got in touch with me and 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 and, and, and basically enrolled me uh, in uh, being part of uh, this program that we created on a tall ship. And exactly at the same time, I was coaching Krista. Krista uh, was a student of mine, and he also hired me to be his coach while he went through uh, what's called the CTI certification program. And we had our final session, and. Uh, sometimes when I'm coaching, uh, I'll just ask, so what are you looking at right now? Uh, and I did that with, with, with Krister, and he said, well, right this second, uh, I'm looking at this bottle in my room, and inside the bottle is this tall ship. And I had just gotten off of the phone previous to that session with him, where he was pitching, you know, uh, doing leadership development on a tall ship. So my jaw dropped, uh, and, and, and then uh, Chris said, what's going on? And I said, look, I have to drop coaching for a second, uh, and I have to tell you what's going on. And when I told him that, he said, well, I want to be part of this. And I said, you'd be perfect for it. And I said, what a great way to end our coaching relationship. We can you know, now do something together. So the three of us, uh, from then on, that was maybe, I don't know, a little bit over a year ago. We've yeah. been uh, uh, working on this ship and also working on developing what we're going to be presenting, the five knowledge centers. But a little bit more about Krista. Uh, Chris is just an amazing guy. He's got this great company. A lot of you probably are on the call because of uh, his company, the Team Coaching Zone. Uh, and he's really um, uh, just carving uh, a, a real, uh, I, I would say, position in the team coaching world. Uh, and he's got this amazing background, um, which I'm not going to get into right now, but a, a lot of it was in con conflict resolution. He worked with the UN, um, and um, he, he'll show up on the podcast. We'll see. He's got this huge heart uh, uh, with this amazing brain. So that's a little bit about Krister. Hey, thank you for that, Eric. And um, let me just introduce briefly Pim Harder to round out the facilitation team today. Pim Harder, based out of the Netherlands, been a coach for more than 15 years and really has been a pioneer 
in bringing coaching to the Netherlands, in particular in the education center, education sector, also doing that with the Dutch police force and in other companies and organizations. So real pioneer in the coaching field, just as Eric going back to one of the early pioneers in the coaching field. Uh, Pim has been really a visionary. I think without his vision, this uh, whole program wouldn't have come together. And so I think the dream started with Pim and, uh, you know, then spread. There's this uh, famous Taoist saying that out of one comes two, out of two comes three, and out of three comes all things. But out of the one, it started with Pim and then went to Eric and then, uh, then to me. But uh, both Pim and I have, uh, having been students of Eric, have that in common. So really fun creating with these guys. And I think what we've pulled together over the last year has been, uh, been really wonderful, not just in the ship context, but in classrooms, one-on-one coaching, in companies, et cetera, on land, on shore, in a variety of settings. And so we're, we're excited to uh, you know, get into that uh, with you guys today. So with that, I think what we're going to do is move you into just a chance right here at the outset to have you experience a little bit of what we call our flagship program, which is really introducing the five knowledge centers concept out in nature. And uh, throughout this webinar, we have a couple of goals. So one is to introduce you to the five knowledge center model, uh, let you have an experience of that. Also do some storytelling around how does this apply when you're doing one-on-one coaching, when you're working with a team, whether you're trying to boost your own leadership. So there's a couple of different rich areas of application. We want to do some storytelling around that. And then we want to share with you some of our upcoming programs that we have going on in 2017 that will extend into 2018. So we're going to start off here with, uh, again, um, a little two-minute video of our flagship program. And I have to switch over to YouTube for this one. So just bear with me a second while I tee this up. And the sound should come through, no problem. So let me pull this up and let's, uh, let's play this. Normally, I don't jump and make quick decisions like this. But when I saw the Nautilus experience, I threw caution to the wind and signed up immediately. What was the Nautilus experience at the end for me? It was the fulfillment of a dream. And this dream has many, many, many levels. A dream that has many levels and that invited me to explore the dimensions of being a full human being, including my relationship with nature. It was an immense learning adventure where we took a deep dive into expanding our range as leaders. It brings people to use not only their heads, but actually their hands, the heart, the groin, the gut. Where we experience dynamic stages of becoming a team and explore the exciting world of team coaching. The secret is that you can't hide who you are on the boat. Who you are comes to the surface, and that creates an amazing opportunity for transformation. I'm walking away with the motivation to live my life more boldly, and with the confidence that I have a new learning community that will support my leadership and team coaching journey in the future. I'm so glad that I literally threw caution to the wind and signed up for this life-changing experience. Just a little video to kind of set the mood for today's session. Um, You know, they say with all good adult learning, you know, you want to have people experience experience things. So that's going to be sort of one of the themes here, just the first little experiential thing to give you guys a feel for and start to um, bring some of the elements of what we are calling the five knowledge center model. And the experience on the boat for us was really sort of bringing it all together not just within us as individuals, the five knowledge centers, but our relationship with the larger ecosystem and environment that we're part of, you know, which we call nature and our framework. But let's back up and we want to provide to you just a brief overview of the framework and a little bit about its origins. And we'd love to start with this quote by John Nesbitt. If any of you are familiar with John Nesbitt, but he was, uh, is, I think, still a futurist and he oftentimes would write about trends. And this is going back into the early 2000s or so, and this quote we really like, it said, the most exciting breakthroughs of the 21st century will not occur because of technology, 
but because of an expanding concept of what it means to be human. And I think those of us who have been drawn to the coaching field have found not only in our own journey in becoming coaches, but in working with our clients, whether that's with individual contributors or leaders with teams, is there something really powerful in helping people discover more of what's available to them within these areas of potential, these areas of knowledge, these untapped resources that are, we're sort of limiting ourselves by not tapping into and expressing in our life. And so as Pim and Eric and I started thinking about doing leadership training on a boat, coach training on a ship, we started to think a little bit about, you know, what models could we bring in that would sort of extend what's really great out there in terms of practice and would push us as coaches. You know, Eric has been training coaches and coaching for more than 25 years, Pim over 15 years. I've been learning and development for 15 years or so. And so what we wanted to do was really create a model that not only built on what we had learned in our experience and our journey as, you know, coaches and trainers and facilitators, but would extend us and challenge us. And so we went to the drawing board and with a number of rounds of iteration, drawing on different sources of inspiration, we, you know, slowly over time developed what we call the five knowledge centers. The model, which we'll walk you through here, has a number of sources of inspiration. One of them is the Vitruvian Man. So if you're familiar with Da Vinci's 1490 um, diagram, you have the sort of the human being inside of a circle here. And if you go back to the time of Da Vinci, one of the things about the Vitruvian Man was the idea that within man was a microcosm of the universe, that all the sort of potentialities and powers and capabilities that exist in the universe, you can find at the macro you know, cosm level as well as the microcosm level. And so we decided to explore what are the aspects of being a full human being? And if we were to push our comfort zone, where would we look? And so as we started to play with the model, you know, for sure, we live in a society where reason has been privileged, logic, analysis, data is something that's sort of the staple a lot of organizational life and the way we tend to move through the world. I mean, if you get on LinkedIn and read blog posts, we're constantly appealing to the head through facts, logic, you know, persuasion. And so while we validate the head as a really incredible source of reason, it feels like oftentimes where most of the breakthroughs happen in leadership development and coaching and learning tends to not happen as much in the head as in getting out of the head. And so if you get people out of the head, well, where would you go? And so if we move to another knowledge center, the second one, we call the heart. Obviously, the heart is the seed of affection. For us, really, sort of the, the most noblest form of the heart is really around love, that all other emotions like sadness, anger, fear, all find their origins back in needing to be loved. And when we create an environment of love and support, human beings can grow. We can really develop the courage to experiment, to take risks, to take the risk to fail. And so for many of us, when we get out of our heads, we find the heart and really opening up that part of who we are, you know, really incredible for transformation and growth. There's a saying when you're, when you're developing a child or helping a child grow that a child exists in a holding environment. Not so much the physical holding environment, but a psychological holding environment that when a child is physically held and psychologically nurtured, they can grow into a full human being and all those potentialities within them become released. And without that context of love and support, actually they get stunted and developmental stages can get missed. So this is also true for, for adults. And when we talk about a climate of psychological safety, which Google found is really what really was at the core of all their high-performing teams. That's what we're talking about here is really creating that environment where people feel supported, nurtured, and also challenged to step their game up to the next level. The other third one, which you may have heard this 3-H model of head, heart, hands, very common, is the idea that a lot of what we learn actually comes through doing, that you know, in our kinesthetic you know, genes and bones and, you know, sinews and muscles, we, we have a lot of learning embedded there. When you learn to ride a bike, once it gets in your bones and in your hands, you don't have to think about it anymore. You can chew gum, listen to music, talk to your friend and ride a bicycle all at the same time. But when you first start learning from that area, it's really hard unless you deliberately focus on it. And so the head, heart, hands model has been a, a, a popular one in learning and development for a while. But we sort of draw on these three. But what else is there? Where else can we go? And so 
if we move to the center, we talk about the gut, which now in the last, you know, recent years has gotten more and more scientific evidence around it. Daniel Kahneman in the book Thinking Fast and Flo Slow talks about this, you know, source of knowledge, which is pre pre-rational. It moves faster than our cognitive thought can move. And oftentimes in our gut, we find our way forward. We can find, you know, what is needing to emerge. So head, heart, hands, and gut, these are four knowledge centers. But as we were kicking around the model and we started looking at the human being, we said, you know, what else is missing? And clearly there was one other dimension that was missing, which was the groin. And to be honest with you, we were a little bit shy around this one at first. And even in our team, when we started exploring the groin in our own teaming, you know, we would have our share of adolescent banter and jokes and laughing, uh, which in and of itself created great energy for the group, which we were to capitalize. But what we started to find was that when we tapped into the power of the groin, what gives us a sense of purpose, the power to actually create life, that part of who we are that is really powerful, seed of creative energy, that it's an area that oftentimes, you know, lies untapped. It's become taboo. We don't talk about the groin. And it, you know, it, it exerts itself on the scene, you know, in a, a variety of ways. So as we started to work with this model, head, heart, hands, gut, and groin, we started to see in our coaching that when we actually physically embodied these five areas, having clients touch their heart when they were speaking, or physically walk on the floor to one of five areas, or when we were working with the team, walking them to these five knowledge centers, what we found was it really expedited and accelerated insight on an incredible level. And what oftentimes would take half a day, one day in a team building session would oftentimes take 30 minutes, 15 or 30 minutes to cover when we actually physically got people tapping into these five knowledge centers. And the same being true in one-on-one -on -one coaching. But as we were experimenting with the model, we said, you know, there's something missing here, which is that a human being only finds full expression in relationship to its larger ecosystem and environment. And so the five knowledge centers really become full when we're talking about that in expression in relationship to the larger environment and context. And whether we're talking about nature, the woods being on the ocean, or even in an organizational setting, the building you're in, the physical space, really starting to become aware of how we can tap into the physical space around us, the nature, whether that's, you know, natural forms of nature or man-made forms of nature. And so this is sort of the core part of the model. And as you'll see in our outside circle, the circle is a little bit incomplete, which is leaving space for the unknown, for something larger, maybe spirit, whatever you want to call it. But the idea is that by having people sort of tap into these five knowledge centers in relationship to nature, that that, you know, can oftentimes lead to breakthrough insights, breakthrough performance. And I'll make one final comment about nature before I ask Pim and Eric to jump in here. You know, one of our critiques of modern life is that while we come from nature, you know, we have, you know, we have become increasingly distant from it, right? That nature tends to exist outside of a window. Most of us as coaches, as trainers have been training in boardrooms, in, you know, hotel training rooms, et cetera. And nature exists sometimes outside the window. And maybe once in a while we go outside and tap into that, but then we go back into the room. And so as we started exploring with this model, we said, how do we actually get people out of these hermetically sealed, stale environments and really reconnect them to a big source of who we are and where we come from, which is nature? So with that brief introduction, and I see here we got some um, comments in the chat, I want to invite um, Pim and uh, Eric to jump in to help us move along. So we, we wanted to give, we didn't just want to explain this to you, we wanted to actually give you a, a very, very quick experience. And, and just know this is not the whole enchilada, uh, but it may give you just a little bit of, um, uh, of an insight of, of how our model works. So we're gonna um, we're gonna start off by just asking you a question, which you will answer uh, to yourself. So this is not gonna be um, interactive in the sense that uh, you, you'll be talking back to me. Uh, and the question is, what's something that you really want in your life? So just think about that for a second. 
What's something that you really want in your life right now? And as you're pondering this question, um, what I'd like you to do is just take a deep breath and scan your body and just notice, notice what's happening in your body. Notice the impact that that question is having on you. And now take a moment and just put your hand on your heart. And as you're pondering that question, notice what your heart is telling you. And now, go to your gut. And notice, what is your intuition telling you? And your intuition may show up in other parts of your body. So give, your, give yourself, a, it may show up as an image. Or uh, you may notice that your foot is tapping. So notice, notice how your particular intuition gets access. And just allow that, allow that to inform you. And also know that this doesn't have to make sense. Just allow yourself to have your senses be aware. And now if, if you all will just stand up, stand up for a second and get grounded and really go to your groin area where passion resides and really tap into that wanting. And notice what emotions are coming up around that wanting, that passionate place. And as you're tapping into that wanting, notice what your hands are doing right now. What are your hands expressing? And just allow all of those four knowledge centers to just really be activated at the same time. And just notice how you're standing as that's being activated. And now, if you'd like, it's up to you. You can continue to uh, stand or you can sit down because where we're going now is to your head. Your head has been taking in all of this information that you've been exploring. And the wonderful thing about the mind is now you can get to pick and choose what information are you gonna use around that question? What's something that you really want in your life right now? And my guess is has some pretty good answers. And that's it for now.
just take a moment. Maybe you want to jot down anything that came up. And we just want to give you uh, an opportunity to reflect on the impact that that exercise just had on you. And you're welcome to speak, or if you want to use the chat room, whatever you're comfortable with. I guess a question on my part, um, was any of this influenced by embraining by um, Grant Suzalu and Marvin Okra? Um, uh, not from my end, but maybe uh, Pim or, or Krista, was uh, any of this influenced by that? No, I mean, I think some of the big influence, influences were around <clears throat> our own sort of experience as coaches working with embodiment, et cetera, the whole mind movement, Herman brain dominance, kneeling brain instrument, funky business and body cognition. There's a number of different sources, but not that specific reference you mentioned. Yeah. And um, now that you've mentioned it, we'll definitely look up and see what we can learn from them. And how uh, was the actual experience? Looks like Paul shared in the chat window here, I found that I could suddenly connect with and clarify something I need and then connect with what I now need to do. Mm. Cool. How about others? What was it like? Marie Louise says, yes, it makes it clear about what's next for me. And then uh, Matt uh, became very thoughtful, not certain I wanted to tap into each of the knowledge centers. Yeah. Thank you for your honesty. I, I think um, for many of us, um, I, I can't speak for you, of course, Matt. I'm just going by what you said. But for many of us, there are certain areas that are already powerful and well activated. And there's, there's other areas that we're either shy about or 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 maybe is uh, not well developed yeah so yeah so i think what what we know is when when we developed this uh, this model and when we started going to the groin and i found it really hard to go there and i think uh it was a bit easier for Eric, maybe, but but Chris and I had, had some difficulties with it. You know, I became 14 years old. You know, like really making fun about it, and uh, it was really like like really a big laugh. But once you get past that, you get in touch with that immense power that is there. You know, it's it's the it's it's the kind of the source of creation that that is lying there, and there's a lot of passion and and power. And if you can tap into that. I found that really surprising uh, what, what then ha what happens mm -hmm. now. Love that, Pim. And I noticed Denise has made a couple of comments here about noticing where she was holding on tight, not wanting to truly the answer the question. So the Knowledge Center was helping you identify, and then later you said founding the resistance that you're facing around yeah. whatever that is you're wanting to bring into your life. Well, thanks for your feedback. Cool. Yep. Um, there's another piece. Um, as, as you know, uh, 
as, as we mentioned, th this has been a grand experiment for Pim, Krister, and I for, for maybe the last uh, uh, year or so. Um, and we've been testing it out in many, many different ways. And what we also came up with, besides the knowledge centers, um, is uh, a leadership model. Um, uh, because we call this uh, leadership team coaching, actually, what, we, what we're doing here. Um, and the three principles of leadership that we came up with is, uh, number one, it's all about me. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, leaders need to focus on their own personal leadership development. Um, it's all about you, which is uh, training leaders um, how to use coaching competencies uh, with uh, individuals on their team. Uh, clients uh, and colleagues and all about we is the teaming part of it where uh, we're actually not only coaching individuals but we're coaching uh, and leading our teams our organizations um, our industries um, and the world at, la at large and what we found was that this model actually works for all three levels uh, all about me, all about you, and all about we. And um, to be honest with you, that was one of the things that really, really amazed me. Uh, I, I had been working with uh, similar models, not exactly this one, for years, and I knew that um, that you know tapping into these knowledge centers were, was powerful individually and with others. Uh, but to be honest with you, I had no idea how this was going to work uh, with teams. And, and what I found out was uh, through uh, through trial and error and experience that actually it's 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 you know teams have a heart, teams have uh, intuition, team you know systemically uh, teams have passion, uh, and, uh, and 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 yeah, this model also works with that. So on that note, um, I, I I'm gonna uh, each one of us. Uh, um, myself, Krista, and Pim, we're, we're going to give you a, a little bit of a story about how these work in each uh, level. And, and uh, I'm going to start with the All About Me story. Uh, and it ha actually happened on the ship. You all saw that, that video uh, about the uh, ship adventure. Um, and it was a moment in time on the ship. It was the day after a really, really... Uh, it wasn't a storm, but it, it might as well have been a storm. It was the, the high winds. The, the ship was really, uh, uh, it rocked us, let's just put it that way, for a full day. Um, and then the next morning, um, we were leading our participants, and something happened that, um, that completely threw us as leaders. Uh, 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 I'm going to be really honest. We 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 literally lost authority in that moment, and uh, and the participants were angry. Uh, they didn't like what was going on. They were very verbal about it. Um, uh, as mentioned, I've I've been a coach and a and, and a facilitator for for over you know 25 years, and um, and I thought I had experienced everything. And 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 I honestly I did not I had never experienced that kind of a mutiny. It was mutiny on the bounty. Um, and I remember uh, when it was happening. Uh, generally, as a facilitator, when when something when there's resistance, when people get angry, when they all of that, there's this part of me that uh, will 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 uh, you know like rise to the occasion. And you know, stand up and take a, a strong stand or whatever is needed, right? And and we were out in the sea, uh, and and this is actually, uh, I guess, a nature story because what I realized in that moment was that I was totally powerless about what was going on. Uh, something was telling me to not rise to the occasion. Something was telling me to allow all of this to unfold. Um, and, and as you know, we had a videographer 
that that's why we have a a, a a little tape of that. And he came up afterwards and he, and, and he said, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? This is awful. You have to do something. And I just looked at him and I said, um, actually, we're going to do nothing. And he said, what do you mean we're going to do nothing? And I said, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do nothing. And I remember that evening I, uh, I was at peace. I um, just allowed actually nature to, I had no idea what was going to unfold, um, but I knew that I had to trust, um, trust my body, trust what was going on in the ship, trust what was going on with the participants. And actually the next day uh, and, and the rest of the uh, journey, and there was about a week left of the journey, um, everything um, naturally unfolded and the team actually realized that what happened uh, needed to happen for them to get the learning that they needed to get uh, and it was all done uh, with a with very very little effort and so for me the all about me was that it was a profound experience of actually surrendering it was a profound experience for me of acceptance and knowing that, um, you know, I'm just this little speck, you know, like I said, we were in the ocean and, and I really got that I was just this little speck in the grand scheme of things uh, and, and that I needed to trust what was happening. Love that story, Eric. And I'm going to be moving us into the next story, which is going to be around the interpersonal level or the you, what we call the you level. And uh, I just wanted to kind of build a little bit on what Eric was saying that, you know, being out in nature brought nature from, again, rather than being something in the background outside of a window into the foreground that actually we were on nature's court. Nature was really present. And we have a lot of stories about tapping into what was in nature telling us at certain moments. We had interesting breakthroughs where we didn't know what to do when we met as a team and walked on the model and dolphins showed up and there were just kind of signs and sort of magical things. And we even dare say use the word magic because there was a magic in allowing nature to help inform the process. And I think Eric captured sort of the spirit of that. And when you're out in the ocean, there's something really powerful and humbling. I think that was a word that Eric used and many of us used coming back from the experience was really being humbled despite all the experiences we've had facilitating and being in challenging groups, but being out in an environment where you don't have total control and when you surrender to that, what can happen? So I want to share just a brief story from one-on-one -on -one coaching. And uh, this is actually from a couple of weeks ago. I was coaching a coach actually who's from Ireland. Uh, she happened to be in Portugal and we were on Skype and uh, she wanted to have a coaching session around picking a niche. She was sort of in two areas in the coaching field. And she was sort of aware that for a business reason, she really wanted to niche in one of two areas. And uh, one of them, you know, and oftentimes I think many of you have had this experience that clients will come struggling between two choices. And oftentimes for the client, it's really not clear which one of those is the right way forward. And they're kind of struggle between the two and there's kind of a battle going on, a push and pull struggle between the two. And so the way I basically coached her, and you know, this unfolded in about 20 minutes, I actually, once it came forward what the coaching topic was and that she was struggling around the niche, I actually asked her to stand up. So we were on Skype and, uh, and I said, you know, I introduced to her the five knowledge center framework and I said, which of the five knowledge centers is calling you? And she said, my heart. So I said, okay, so actually find a space on the floor, just move, take a step somewhere and embody the heart. And we got to the heart and I said, pick one of those two choices that you're struggling with. And we started coaching around that choice. And we went from the heart to the hands, to the gut, to the groin, to the head. We also brought in what is in the room there right now in terms of nature. She was inside of a room that had a sort of patio balcony going out overlooking a city. And so we kind of brought that in. So we explored one of the options using all the five knowledge centers plus nature. And then I asked her to do the same for the other topic. And so we kind of walked through and explored the other choice, 
from the five different knowledge centers. And what it did in effect was actually unpack all these five knowledge centers, the, 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 the sources of information she was getting were all conflicting. And by unpacking them and exploring each one separately, it helped her come into focus. And it became really clear to her when she went to the gut in exploring the second topic, that really what was really calling her forth. And that one of the choices was a smaller, safer option. And that the one that was bigger and bolder that she really wanted to do was scary. And her gut spoke. And I asked her, I said, if your gut could speak, what would it say? And her, she said, my gut is telling me I need to go for this bolder one and that I'm playing it safe. And so within 20 minutes, you know, in this coaching session, she explored these two really powerful business choices and really in her body exploring it kind of came to a decision that was not just in her head, was in her heart, was in her hands, was in her groin, but in particular, her gut, you know, led her forward and it's exciting to see how that's really sort of galvanized her to really channel her energy now, you know, moving forward into action. So a little story, just quick story of using the, the model and coaching. And one of the things we're really big fans of is around the embodiment piece. And, you know, part of the idea of this model is really to actually embody all of these knowledge centers so that we learn how to tap into them and start to draw on them, including this uh, relationship with nature. <clears throat> So let me pass it over to Pim, who's going to share a final story. Yeah, well, it's interesting, the embody part. Uh, I really love that. And the funny thing is, uh, you know, when we work with teams, we regard teams as, as an entity. So it's like working with an individual, but, but it is a team. And the funny thing is, you can, uh, what I did about a half a year ago, I do, I do some work with the Dutch police force. And... Uh, what happened there was there were two teams. One team was working on human trafficking and the other one was gathering in, in intelligence around that. And uh, there was a big reorganization happening at that uh, time within the Dutch police force and they really had to collaborate. So we were working on a vision how they could do that. And then I introduced um, the stick picture actually, the, the model, the five knowledge centers model, put it on the floor and first there was some resistance you know yeah why should we do that walk on the floor and act like a team but um what really became uh clear is by just walking the the, the knowledge centers that you could in a really quick way um get clarity about where 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 they were heading uh what what the purpose was and uh you know what the next steps in their development would be as a team so it's what i found really interesting about this this model and uh working on it uh, with a team is that it's really about rapid team formation it's like uh, what what, it, what normally would take me about a day or two days now it takes me about half a day so that yeah just to share that with you yeah, so we wanted to, um, you know, leave a little bit of time at the end, and we just have a couple of two final slides to end with uh, in today's session, and we can have a little bit of room for Q&A at the end, and if you guys want to come off mic. So we've been, as uh, Eric and Pim and I mentioned, we've been developing this over the last year. We've been sort of pilot testing it in one-on-one -on -one coaching, in the training of internal coaches and companies. We've been using it with teams, both uh, onshore as well as out in nature, and uh, the, re the results have been really, I think, nothing short of pretty striking. We have found the power and speed at which really using the five knowledge center model as a coaching framework, as a leadership framework, you know, super powerful and in teams. And so we've developed three programs, which I'd love to share with you a little bit about. And so Pim is going to tell us a bit about the Nautilus experience, which is a, another offshore program we have coming up in August off of Nova Scotia. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you know, the, the knowledge experience is really like uh, the thing I really love. Uh, that's, that's where it all started. Um, I think uh, being on board of a tall ship uh, is an awesome experience. Um, what's interesting about it is, uh, you know, when you go sailing, when you're out in the ocean, there's no Wi-Fi, uh, cell phones don't work. Um, so it's really like a pressure cooker 
for a team to work together. And um, I think that's what we experienced on our first uh, trip we did in, in April last year, is that uh, you, can, you really cannot hide who we are on, on the ship. It really comes to the surface. And um, what I noticed was that it's, it is, was really a profound uh, program. So that's, that's a Nautilus experience. We're going to do that on the, again on the 13th to the 19th of, of August. It's also a certification program. So you get certified in the five knowledge centers uh, training. And um, we've got a few seats left. So if you want to join us, you're more than welcome. And uh, I know it's going to be, it's going to be within a month. So hope you can join us on that. And if you want to have some more uh, um, details around that, please contact me or Chris or Eric, and we will give that to you. Awesome. I'm going to share a little bit about the uh, Five Knowledge Center certification program, which is a classroom-based program. We understand that not everybody is comfortable getting out on the ocean, although um, you know we brought a group out in April for two weeks. And for most people, it was the first time being far offshore, a couple hundred miles offshore, and, uh, you know, it was just an amazing experience. And, um, and, you know, there are other forms of where we could see envision this program being applied. So far, we've just done it on the ocean, but, you know, in nature on land is another area yet to be explored. So you know, open to collaborating with folks around that. We are offering a, um, a classroom based program in New York City, 15 to 17 of November this year, where we're really going to be for three days diving into how to really tap into your own leadership around the five knowledge centers. And part of this is about helping leaders in companies tap into how they can actually be coaches. And also for coaches, people who are coaches but not formal leaders, to tap into their own leadership. And so on day one of that program, we really focus a lot on helping you discover your own leadership. In day two, we get into using the five knowledge centers in coaching, how to take people through that, embodying that experience and then the final day is really taking it up to the team level. So this idea of me, you, we, we're really going to be covering in that program. And you get to experience it in the classroom setting. The Nautilus experience kind of has a much more dynamic feel to it. But this classroom-based training will also be really exciting. So if you can't make the uh, Nautilus experience in Nova Scotia, we'd love to see you in a classroom program. Eric, do you want to tell a little bit about rapid team formation? is our, uh, excuse me, I, I'm on an iPhone and somebody just tried to call me. My apologies. I uh, definitely uh, declined. Anyway, um, uh, rapid team formation actually organically uh, got developed and, and organizations uh, for teams that want to uh, to form uh, and 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 get going quickly um, and the way that it uh, organically came about was um, we were flown into uh, the, so the tall ship is the home of the tall ship which is by the way called wheel to swan um, is in the Netherlands and we got flown in to actually train the captain and crew on our methodology so that we could all be on the same page when we did this trip. Uh, so we took them through a day and a half process. Um, and what we found is that it really, like I said earlier, works really, really well with teams. Um, and so we decided, hey, we need to create uh, this, off this offering. Um, and, and, and so we, we've got, uh, I kind of want to just bottom line it. We, we've told you how this works with teams. Uh, but what, what we haven't told you is that there's also like a, a strategy session that we developed where we use the five knowledge centers. Um, and so this also works in terms of uh, if a company wants to uh, 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 create a strategy uh, program, uh, this is also a model that can work. Well, thanks, Eric. And rapid team formation is something that can be done on land as well as on the boat. You know, our sense is like Pim mentioned, when you're on the boat, who you are doesn't hide and it brings to the surface. And so there's an acceleration process that I think is really hard to replicate in a classroom setting, but you know, is a program can definitely be done 
in, uh, you know, in the classroom as well. So exactly. if you're interested to learn more about the five knowledge centers, we've recently published a post on LinkedIn. Uh, you can check that out. We have links to it here, the LinkedIn. We also have it on the Team Coaching Zone site. We have a podcast that Pim and Eric and I recorded when we got back after the April trip between England and Portugal, and we recount a bunch more stories there, and you can learn a little bit more about the origins and the naming of the program, and et cetera. And so you can tap into that at the Team Coaching Zone. It's also available on iTunes and SoundCloud. If you go to teamcoachingzone.com forward slash five knowledge centers, you can check out the different programs we have, the different media. And uh, again, would love to be in touch with you if you're interested to learn more about this. If you have, we're open to collaborations and partnerships as well. So if you have creative ideas or teams, groups that you think this might be suitable for, happy to, you know, connect with you and reach out to us. So we have just five minutes here at the end and we sort of want to, Leave it open for comments, questions, reactions. Um, what else would you like to know here before we wrap up today's session? So I'll ask a question. Yeah, please do. Um, it, it's, a, it's an elegantly approach, which, was, which I was drawn to. I wonder how, how it... it um, how you position it in, you know, an executive level environment. I mean, do you get the buy-in from executives who um, feel that the approach is, is, because it doesn't seem like there's a lot of, of data attached to it unless, unless there's another layer to it that I haven't seen yet, but it doesn't seem like it's, it's data driven or, and, and a lot of executives are in their heads so often that uh, I guess, how do you get them to embrace um, these other aspects of, of tapping in. Can I take a st can I take a stab at that? Uh, what what we found is that if you start with one on one coaching with uh, um, uh, an executive uh, that's that's in a position uh, where they're they're working with a team, uh, if you get if you get uh, their personal buy in first. It's 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 much easier than to bring it into uh, bring it into their team, um, and and if you're not uh, if you want to go directly to the organization, uh, once again, if there's somebody inside the organization that, that 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 has an experience of this model or has an experience of you, um, uh, it's it's much easier to bring it in. So I mean, I hear what you're saying. There needs to be buy-in, uh, otherwise. Um, uh, uh, there's a lot of resistance, but the, the, the flip side of that also is, is there's a way to actually embrace the resistance. Um, we, we recognize that we're, uh, some of, some of, uh, 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 what we're asking people to do is uncomfortable. Uh, and rather than try to hide that discomfort, we actually include it. We go, yeah, it is uncomfortable. It's meant to be uncomfortable. Uh, and, 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 and here's an opportunity to create a new relationship to discomfort. Mm. Discomfort isn't necessarily bad. Uh, mm. actually in order for, for, uh, teams to really, really succeed, they need to be uncomfortable. Gotcha. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I want to chime in and, and build on this a little bit. Um, I just was recently coaching a CEO and his, his top team, and I didn't, you know, pitch the Five Knowledge Center as the main product. But early on in the team building session, actually after just an opening, we're about 45 minutes in, I actually brought the leader up in front of the room. And I mentioned, I prepared him a little bit in advance that I was going to do this, although he didn't know the full extent. But I actually walked him on the Five Knowledge Center's fishbowl style in front of his team around needs assessment data that we collected about what the team was, you know, strengths and weaknesses of the team, what they were struggling with. And within 20 minutes, one of the big things the team was struggling with was that the leader was very much in his head all the time and was wanting to see, basically wanted him to be more vulnerable. And by actually walking him on the five knowledge centers, he actually showed lots of himself that nobody had ever seen, which was there, but he just needed help to go there. And at the end of the 20 minutes, I folded the team into the exercise. I had the leader be quiet and we went through some rounds of dialogue with the team using the five knowledge centers as well. And it was, you know, within, it was actually the first time in a team session within 
two hours, we had basically slayed all the dragons, got to the heart of what was really holding that team back. And they're like such fans of the model now. Um, they just love it. And so I think some of this is about, and this is sort of more of a consulting skill, is around when do you foreground something? When do you background it? Um, I think there's a lot of pitches that you can make around low engagement, around sort of people dropping out of, you know, exiting corporate jobs to live lives of more purpose rather than, you know, just in addition to profit. So I think there's lots of ways to meet clients where they are. And there's a lot of different entryways. You can come through the front door, you can come through the back door, you might go through a side door. And uh, I think just like as good consultants, having a lot of tools in our toolkit is helpful. And some of this is about your confidence, right? So I think a lot of times when we sell something new or we start pitching something new, if we're confident, then we evoke subconsciously in our client's confidence around it. And I'd be be surprised. I was in a major pharmaceutical company a couple weeks ago training internal HR business partners in the framework. And um, taking them to the groin, which is the most challenging thing. I had a woman come up to the front to volunteer. And, uh, you know, going after something that was new, that was bold, they hadn't seen before, just paid off in spades. And they're applying it, coaching leaders in that major pharmaceutical company already over the phone and uh, having great breakthroughs. So, so anyways, yeah, just uh, building on what Eric said, but uh, getting over our own discomfort, I think. Can be right. I, mean, I love the idea of helping executives, you know, tap in their, to their vulnerability, which is something I think they all yeah. recognize the need to do in order to build trust in their teams, but are sometimes reluctant to do that. And this yeah. provides a pathway for them. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, by the way, I, I noticed there were some questions uh, that were asked um, or comments that were made in the chat room. Um, Krista, you're the one that is, you're hosting this. Yeah, sure. Um, how, can we, how can we respond? I want to make sure yeah. that we respond. I'll, just, I'll pull some of these out. One of them was uh, Daniel said, why would we choose this model in a particular moment over another? Well, we have access to the recording after the call. So yes, you'll have access to the recording. I'll post that on the webinars page for replay. I think there's a variety of when and why to use the model. Uh, One of them is when, you know, teams and individuals are stuck. They're in their heads. They're having a hard time getting out of their heads. I think this really works really well. I mean, we've seen, especially on the boat, when you bring a group of people on the boat, it accelerates formation like unlike anything. I don't think we could have scripted the two week trip any better in terms of, you know, forming, storming, norming and performing in like 10 days with a group of people. So um, I think those are just a couple of quick reasons. I think there's others, but those are the, that's how I would respond to that question. And then can I uh, also add to it uh, that each area actually responds to uh, the beginning of a question. For instance, the head is the what, the heart is the who, um, the gut, is the uh, where, uh, the groin is the why, and the hands are the how. Um, And different people, uh, and in this particular case, different executives um, will uh, naturally go to one of those five uh, uh, questions when they're trying to figure something out. Hmm. So uh, so if you want to go to their strengths, if if you have an executive that's a doer, you may have them go to the, the how question first. And then from there, you know, go, go to their strengths first and then get them into other areas that maybe they don't go to normally. But, go, you know, uh, so, so the, and, and that's something that we go deeper into in, in our certification program. Yeah, just going to echo what Denise said here around it appears the executive benefit is the acceleration of the formation of the team, yes, or individual uh, of what's holding him or her back, for sure. I think there's something, you know, I learned being out on the ship working with this model was learning how to facilitate in a dynamic, a much more dynamic way when things are moving. I'm not in a hermetically sealed, tightly controlled classroom but I wanted to do something in the galley. That's not a good place. Let me go out on the deck. Learning how to work more in the moment, using space more, uh, more dy- dynamism, working in conditions that are not, again, you know, perfect for training, but actually turn out to be much better because they are more dynamic and engaging. So I've noticed kind of an uptick in my boldness and risk-taking 
when I'm working with teams, like this thing around taking the leader right up front and coaching him in front of the team within 30, 40 minutes of a session. I'd never done that in the past. I think you know, I probably would take three or four hours before getting into something really juicy. You know, in this case, within an hour, we, you know, less than an hour, we were at the heart of it. I, I, I credit that to being out on the ship, you know, which sort of pushed my, I think, my edges. Okay, so. Okay. We're a little up. bit over, but uh, thank you for being uh, such a wonderful group of people and being so uh, committed and involved with us. Uh, we apologize for going over. Awesome. Thanks. And Eric, uh, one other comment came in here by Mark was interesting. So uh, Paul had written uh, on resistance for head level people. Some stats can help. Uh, example, the brain has 100 billion neurons, the heart 120,000 neurons, and independent intelligence gut 5 billion neurons. And uh, an independent intelligence neuroscience has recently provided evidence of these independent brains, right? Yes, yeah, so I know they found um, brain tissue in the head, heart, and uh, guts. And it'll be interesting to see where else over time, you know, these intelligences uh, and support and evidence for that. So I think there's knowledge we can connect to this, a knowledge base. Uh, yeah. Sure. I think that was Mark, right? Mark sent us that. Yeah. So thank uh, you, yeah, Mark. Mark. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Um, also, uh, Mark, just in response to that, uh, you might have heard this already, but there's a, a, a kind of catchphrase lately that science is finally catching up with ancient wisdom. A lot of the stuff that we're teaching here, um, uh, we're, we're finding quotes from uh, uh, ancient uh, Egypt and Greece uh, that respond to a lot of the things in the model. Uh, and now modern science is actually proving a lot of, a lot of that wisdom. Mm. Yeah, and I think if we go back to the beginning of that quote by Nesbitt around really the biggest breakthroughs are going to be in what it means to be human and we look at sort of the rise of artificial intelligence, our space programs, you know, like when it comes to the human being, you know, there's just so much more for us to uh, discover there. And I think, you know, for us, this is our sort of first attempt at really trying to push the envelope of where we're comfortable yeah. in coaching with leaders and teams around unlocking the potential that's really there. And uh, anyways, it's been fun and we hope to see you again in the future and uh, do join us for program if you if you uh if you're able to yeah definitely okay hope to see you in uh, in canada will be lovely yeah. <laughs> okay everyone thanks so much take care